Man, this is Overlord. We foresee an environmental emergency in the Fuji Sea region. Earth time, 1900 hours. Your instructions are to investigate at once, and remember, you must not reveal your other identity to anyone on the planet. Are you prepared, Spectre Man? Ready. The planet Earth. The city, Tokyo. Like all cities on the face of this planet, Tokyo is losing the battle against man's deadliest enemies, waste and pollution. Despite the efforts of local and world government, the air, the sea and the land may soon lose their ability to support life of any kind. Who will help? Spectre Man. Pollution Research and Control Squad. Hmm. I see. Excuse now, me, I... One of our field observers reports that the factory's dumping waste in Tokyo Bay again. What? Are you sure? That's what they oh, told no, me. Oh, no, not again. Oh, How can they do this? I don't understand. Wait a minute, you people. There's no need to get excited. At least they're not polluting the bay now. The city council accepted our recommendation, and now they put filters in all of the pipes that lead down to the sea. So it's not serious. Everything is under control, you hear? You should know that, Otto. It was your idea. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yes, yeah, you're that's right. 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 How you're could I be such a dumb panic, jerk? Huh? Yeah, so I'm that's dumb. Right. Dumb. Yeah, he said it. I didn't. Yeah. All right. Let's get down to work now. There's a great deal to do. There's pollution everywhere. And we're the agency with all of the muscle necessary to rid the world of it. The installation in the Bay Area is a breakthrough. The first. In Tokyo. All over the world, there are millions of people concerned about pollution. They want to know what we're doing to bring about a cleaner world, how we can protect them. It's a difficult job. Will we do it? Yes, Chief. Hmm. Chief, you can count me in. Hmm? Who, who are you, anyway? <laughs> My name's George. Pleasure. Now, hold on. What's this all about, fella? The name's George. So what? From now on, I'm going to be working here. And this is where I'll sit. Hold on, that's my desk. Let's say it was your desk. We've got to hurry. Why? It's about to start. Huh? How's that? Chief, mm -hmm. there's going to be a disaster soon. That's why I came to join up with you, to help if I can. It's going to happen in the Fuji Sea area. We can make it just in time, but we have to leave now. Hmm. Oh, wow. You hear what he said. Don't be so quick to judge the guy. I mean, he might know. Don't be silly. You just got a little crush. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe it. Well, you must, do you hear? There's great danger. For Tokyo. For the whole world. Chief, you've got to believe. Come on, please. Huh? Do you hear me? I'll get it. Hello? Pollution Research and Control Squad. Yes, just a moment. Here, sir. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, this is Corrado speaking. A an emergency. The Fuji area. Stinks up awful, don't it? Yeah, it's terrible. It smells worse than rotten oysters. It's true, you'll see. I'm telling you, we can't breathe here. Why don't you close that window, stupid? Uh, please, hurry, we need help. Please. 
Even all them dead fish don't make that kind of stink. Yeah, whatever it is, it ain't healthy. Hold on. Where's that kid? Who needs him? It's crazy anyway. That's what you think. I want him along. Yes, uh, I'm with the chief. You have to agree. He was right on that Fuji C thing. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Uh. Hi. Did you think I wasn't going? Gee, I really didn't see him up there. Okay, okay let's, let's go. go. <laughs> I'll give the orders here. How do you know exactly what to do? It's no big mystery. It is to us. I'd rather not tell you too much right now. I can tell you later. Why not now? I can't. We have too much riding on this. Does George know how much is at stake? Does he know about the mysterious spaceship circling above the Fuji Sea? It is not the Overlords. Who is it? Earthlings, enjoy your last days of freedom, for soon you will answer for your neglect and carelessness. And you will answer to me, Dr. Gori, the future master and sovereign of the human race. <laughs> <laughs> George and his friends helpless before the strange powers of Dr. Gori? What are his plans? How will Dr. Gori achieve his goal of mastering the Earth? Can he be stopped? We can't fish in that water. He's right. It's awful. Give me that. I'll catch a fish with this rod. Oh, there's nothing to catch. Look! Oh, gee, what's that light? I don't know. You want to go see? Let's go. Come on. Okay. <laughs> you guys. Look. Look! Oh. Oh. Looks like a big red eye. I wonder what it is. Now let's go down to the breakwater and see what it's all about. What do you say? I thought you said all the fish well. in the ocean were dead. Let's go see. That might be dangerous. I don't think you should. Uh, no thanks. Chicken! Oh. Hey, 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 Who's that fool kid running out there? Is that Sonny? Oh, yeah. That'd be little Sammy, all right. Huh? Oh, Sammy! Soon enough? Hey, what's the matter? We'll get there too late. Huh? Look over there! What is it? Oh, oh. 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 What is it? Oh.
<laughs> Soon this whole world will be in our hands, Karas. The Earthlings, green and ignorant, have turned their beautiful planet into a wasteland of pollution and garbage. I shall easily conquer these fools. Although their civilization is advanced in many ways, they insist on destroying and squandering all that gives them life. Such stupidity cannot be tolerated. You agree, Chorus? Uh, <laughs> Go, Hedron. Kill everything in your path. Go! Who is this strange, angry ape man who calls himself Dr. Gory? Where did he come from? The answers lie in another part of the universe, some 40,000 light years from our own sun, on a line with a constellation we call the Archer. There, in the Geisty solar system, is the planet E, the fifth planet out from its sun. Planet E is among the most civilized and sophisticated planets in the entire universe. Its technology and culture far outstrips our own Earth. The inhabitants of Planet E, ape men like Dr. Gori, were peace-loving as well as civilized. One day they chose Dr. Gori as their leader. He was a brilliant scientist with an IQ far above that any human could hope to attain. However, the citizens of Planet E had made a grave mistake, for Dr. Gori was a mutant. Gori felt that the advanced technology his world had developed was being wasted on peaceful objectives. He began to design and manufacture deadly weapons with which he could overthrow the central government of his planet and then extend the domination of his kind to other worlds in the universe. Fortunately, his plan became known to the government before he could carry it out. Dr. Gori was tried and found guilty. In their society, there was no need for a death sentence. People's minds could be altered so their evil or disagreeable natures no longer existed. But an army officer named Karras helped him to escape before the sentence could be carried out. They left their solar system in a flying saucer. Dr. Gori and Karras wandered aimlessly through space for many years, until one day a magnetic storm swept their ship across space and brought them to our planet Earth. He had never seen such beauty. It was like an emerald in space. But the emerald had a flaw, one that mankind had created. The flaw was pollution. Gori realized instantly that he could use this flaw for his own ends. He created monsters that lived and fed on industrial wastes, smog, garbage, and cadmium. These monsters would help him become ruler of the planet Earth. Karas, look out there. It is just as I had planned. Hedron's deadly gases are destroying everything in his way. Everything! <laughs> Yes. These earthlings are very strange creatures indeed. Yes. They use their resources without thought for the future. They are set on destroying their own world. With Hedron, we will conquer this race of fools easily. Ah, blasted traffic. We'll never get there. Hmm. Come on now. So we'll get there a little late. Or are you suddenly going to sprout wings? Don't be funny. What if something is going on? Don't worry. I think we'd better get off this road. Hey, look over there. The sky's all red. Hmm. What do you suppose it is? I know all this was going on. Mm -hmm. Take it easy. Watch where you're going, will you? Sorry, Chief. Don't worry about it. Okay, everybody, let's get the car out. Right, Okay. Chief. Now push. Hey, wait a minute. Where did George go? 
I don't know. Where is he? George, where are George? you? George! Hey, George! What a nerve. If I see him again, he's fired. But you didn't even hire that joker. Oh, yes, that's very true. Nuts. Next time I'll hire him, then fire him. Spectre Man. Spectre Man. This is Overlord. A monster has risen out of Fuji Bay. It is now proceeding toward Mount Fuji, destroying everything in its path. The monster uses a highly corrosive, deadly gas. Assume your robot form and intercept this monster at once. Do not be seen by anyone during your transformation, or your value to us will be lost and you will be terminated. We wish you good fortune on your mission, Spectre Man. Prepare to transform. Ready. What's that? Something's attacking Hedron. Uh -huh. Earthlings cannot fly. Perhaps it's a creature from another world. Garrus, mm. you must use the ray gun. Kill the intruder. Mm. Mm. No, wait. Mm. First. We'll see what he intends to do. If he hurts Hedron, he'll die. That's the end of him. Now we can go on with our work. What? Something's wrong with Hedron. Look. Hedron is hurt. Get him up here. No. Wait, I'll take care of Hedron. I have another task for you, Kairos. Go look for that flying android and see that he's destroyed. He's burned to a crisp after the ray gun. We don't know that. You go and see. I want no interference ever again. What you see on your television screen is not the creation of some mad movie maker, but an actual sea monster. 
It first appeared in the Bay of Fuji and has already destroyed a great part of the industrial sector with damages estimated in the millions. Look at that. It spurts out a kind of lethal gas. People are dying from that smoke. It must have murdered hundreds already. Great. You were among the first to see it. Do you think it could have come from the ocean floor? How the devil do I know? It, it, it just seemed to come up out of the bay. Hmm. And then it climbed up onto the shore, right? Right, right. I bet I know what it's made of. All the garbage people throw into the sea. Hmm. There's still another mystery. Some witnesses report that a man was flying through the air with no visible support. And this man attacked the monster with spectra rays. Spectra rays. Hmm. Spectre Man. That's a good name. That's what we'll call him, if he ever turns up again. But there's little chance of that. I've just been handed a special news bulletin. The government requests that all residents of the affected areas remain in their homes since they cannot be certain exactly where the monster will next be seen. Pollution control and research. Let's go. Yeah. No, no, wait. What are you doing? You can't. The port's full of poisonous gas. I'm sorry, sir. I can't permit you to go in. <laughs> All right. Let's say you had to arrest a killer. I know you would neglect your duty. Now, would you? Not just to protect your own skin. No, no, sir. Okay, then you understand. Let's go now. Yes, sir. Hey, Rita, why so sad? I was only looking for George. <laughs> well, George wouldn't be anywhere around here. He's home in bed. He's chicken. I knew when the going got tough, George would pull out. Let's forget <laughs> it. I don't want to talk about him. But he was right on. He did tell us something would happen here, didn't he? That's ridiculous. How could he? The guy just made a lucky guess, simple There's as that. There's a lot of work to do. I'll say no more about it. Hop to it. Hmm. Was it just a lucky guess? I'm not sure. Something strange about that young man. Where did he come from? Where did he go? I must be getting soft. I kind of liked him. Chief? Uh, Are you okay? Of course. Get to work. Yes, sir. Otto, watch it! Huh? Otto! Otto! Uh, Not with your toe. Try your head. It's got to be here someplace. Mm. 
that's it. That's it. That's his head. <laughs> Daddy! Dad! Daddy! Dad! Lighter, Dad. Monster killed him. Filthy monster killed him. Dirty old. of a cyborg that is a highly developed robot. It has been reinforced with a positronic brain. It is under the control of Nebula 71, an artificial planet which moves at will through the universe. Nebula 71 is an agent of the Universal Federation. The robot is known as Spectre Man on Earth and his mission is to protect the underdeveloped planets of the universe from premature destruction by their own hands or by others. Nebula 71. Yes, here on Earth, Spectre Man's mission is to save mankind from destruction by fighting the pollution that threatens their ecological balance. How annoying. Federation will undoubtedly send others. We'll have to find a way to combat this new obstruction. If I'm going to conquer the Earth, I need stronger weapons. Karras, open the pollution tanks. Release. Two things I want to make perfectly clear. Hmm? The first is the density of the poison gas. If the level exceeds 0 0.05 parts per million on your counters, get out of the area at once. Yes, Chief. Right. 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 The second point is to measure the density of the gas as a means of locating where the monster is. Rita, listen to me. Now... Here comes George. What? George, hi. Hi. Hey, look at there. Now, how do you suppose he got himself hurt? Are you okay? Yeah, thanks, Chief. I'll be all right. If you say so. But you sure don't look so hot to me. Go lie down. That's an order. You mean? You heard. I remember you mentioned you wanted to join us. And since I'm the chief, you'll do as I say. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thanks. You give the orders. Now sit down. Yes, sir. Let me see that. This is serious. Hey, what's this? You're not burned at all. <laughs> hey, the skin Chief, hasn't been no. touched. Chief, I don't eat pickles. Now look, Chief, it's okay. You don't say. Burn right through your clothes and nothing. Something wrong with the boy? Yes. The child said his daddy was killed yesterday. Now he's asking to join us. Oh, I see. Uh, it's very dangerous. Please, sir, you got to let me try and help. But you can't. I'm sorry. If I could let you, I would, understand? I'm as brave as you are honest. I have to do something. The monster's gonna go on. And you know what's causing it? I know that that monster's made out all the junk that's in the water. It grew up eating all the garbage we throw in the sea, and it got big and mean because it didn't really like eating all that stuff. Hmm. 
It's not right. We gotta stop it. Well, we're trying, my boy. We're doing our best. But, uh, Rita, look here. Yes? Yeah. What about that report we have to get in? Mm -hmm. And you better take care of it right yes, now. Yes, sir. Oh, and you? Oh, no. Vanished into thin air. I'm gonna... I'm gonna have to tell him I can't take this, and then I'll fire him. Spectre Man, this is Overlord. We have reconstructed and repaired your robot shell, which we will teleport to you when you are ready to resume your mission. Our sensors have picked up the presence of another spaceship. We have determined that this spaceship is from the planet E, confirming our suspicions that Dr. Gorey is attempting to conquer this planet. He is using the pollution on Earth to create his monsters. Beware, Specter Man. He is extremely dangerous. Hey, George! What are you doing out here? Oh, <laughs> Getting a I tan? Can't. Yeah. Don't say anything, okay? Yeah. Thanks, Sammy. For what? Staying so cool. Oh, I'll stay cool, but I still want my dad to know I'm trying to do a little to save the city and the sea. You look a lot like my dad, you know. Thanks, and I'm proud to hear it. Mm. Now, you want to fight pollution, right? Yeah. Someday you will. Someone has got to do it. Because soon it's going to be too late. Not just in the sea, the whole polluted world. Hey, I'll tell you what. You work on finding some ways to fight all this pollution, and I'll work on killing that creature. Yeah, and if you need any help, just give us a call. Oh, I doubt that, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> Can you see your house from here? Oh, yeah. It's over there, behind those boats. You mean there. I'm not too happy with either of you youngsters. Get to work and try not to get lost. Yes, sir. Right now. Oh, oh, oh. oh did you see that? Yeah, you're going to feel that for a while. Oh, uh oh, oh, oh. Look up there. Smoke clouds. Polluting the air. What do you suppose it is? Look. Look at that thing coming down. The monster's landing near the office. She's in Georgia there. That's right. Let's move. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Nebula. Nebula, please. Spectre Man, awaiting orders. All right, we're safe here. He'll go away soon. I have an idea. I can make it over to that car. It's only 30 meters away. It's a good chance. Be quiet. Back in a second. I'll get you for what you did to Daddy! Vector Man, transform immediately. Destroy the monster. The city is in great danger. Look at that man fly. Must be Specter Man. What? Who the devil is that? Dad. Oh, wow. Back 
to that. Taurus, you told me he was dead. Now he's attacking Hedron. You ruined my plans, you fool! I may have lost the first round, Spectre Man, but just you wait. I will win the next. My battle has only just begun. And my monsters will wipe you off the face of the universe. And when I have finished you once and for all, then the Earth and everything in it will belong to me. To me. <laughs> And that's the end of that. I don't think we have to worry any more about that ugly beast. I have to get a sample. Just remember, we all have to thank George. After all, he did save the chief. You know, George, I think the chief will have to let you stay. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Anybody want a bite? Go oh, on, oh, try it. Have lunch. <laughs> well, George, welcome to our organization. That man, mm -hmm. that flying man, I mean, who is he? Mm -hmm. I think he's sexy. Oh, no. Hey, George. Hey, George? Yes, son? Do you know the guy who killed that creature? Well, I'm not sure who the man was exactly, but I'm sure he's here to help us fight pollution everywhere. You're lying. Hmm? You think I don't know? I saw what happened. Your Spectre Man, the one that killed the monster. Hey, George? Well, I have to go now. Wait, I want you to have this. It's my father's cigarette lighter. Anyhow, I don't need it. Thank you. That's swell. I appreciate it. Will you come back and see me? You know I will. And very soon. Well, that's it. Come on. All set. See ya. All right, let's go. See you later. Don't forget to come back. Come on, Graham. Spectre Man. Spectre Man. In a flash, like a flame. Strike terror into the hearts of all Earthlings. Destroy Spectre Man once and for all. Will Spectre Man discover Dr. Gory's secret base in time to thwart his evil plan to gain control of the planet Earth? Will Spectre Man be able to rescue Rita from the clutches of the Ape Man? And what will happen when Dr. Gory's hideous new monster, Zeron, confronts Spectre Man? Watch the next exciting episode of 
Spectre Man. Spectre Man. Spectre Man. Spectre Man. Spectre Man. Guinevere, little queen, you're not taking that hat to Paris. <laughs> it's ridiculous. To Paris of all places. Oh, but Arthur, dear, it's the latest thing. <laughs> Peacock feathers. <laughs> <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> I've seen some wild hats. <laughs> but that's the first one ever to fight back. What was that? E flat, I think. Ooh. Your Majesty, the magic sword Excalibur. Where Your Majesty travels, so must travel the magic sword in case the Black Knight would attempt to wrest your crown. He wouldn't dare. <laughs> Believe me, sire, pack the hardware. Pack the sword! Lancelot, the magic sword has never left these shores. The sword is safe as a bank, Your Majesty. Good, Sir Lancelot. As a bank. <laughs> What's a bank? A place for keeping money, Your Majesty. I thought that was an old sock. Inside the security coach is a secret weapon, sire. Show me. But, sire, whose magic sword are we playing with? Open the door. This is, this is no place for, uh, for practicing Darwin. <laughs> Who? The head of security thought of it. Send for Sir Jasper Bond. You were sent for me, sire. Who said that? I, sire. Who are you? Head of security. Head of... Security. Will the magic sword Excalibur be safe from the Black Knight? Sire, I have information that the Black Knight will attempt to steal it. He's got to go. Challenge you to combat at the French court. Meet you and become king in your place. And so I have a plan. This is the plan. Uh, did you say plane? No, plan. Sorry. That is not a bad name for the thing. It's Master Merlin's invention, a flying machine. Now the plan is this. Lancelot and Merlin take the real sword in the flying machine. The, the plane? Right. While a fake sword goes with the train, Morgana Le Fay and the Black Knight will never know. It'll be the best kept secret in all Camelot. <laughs> The real sword is even now crossing the skies to the French court. Who told you? Bond is a double agent? Right. <laughs> and the Black Knight thinks the real sword is going air freight to Paris and that I am a double agent. <laughs> <laughs> and Arthur thinks that I think that the magic sword is back with the royal train and that Bond is a double, double agent. <laughs> <laughs> Enough! Where's the real sword? It's... I'd better find out. Soon Arthur will be out, and I will be in as ruler of old Camelot. Is there no end to your evil? None. Now let's have a lovely battle. Haven't we met before? Air to air combat on an unarmed craft. Go now and return with the magic sword. Charles and Gillies, but I'm sick. Take a sky sick pill. I haven't invented them yet. Haven't you got a spell? What thinkest thou I'm having? Sardines and garlic. Oh. oh. Anyway, it is a fine night for flying. Crangle, batch, but thou hast a big nightly mouth. Thou hast seen nothing yet. What do we do now? With any luck, we'll crash. Now, who has the big mouth? Three 
to one year. Do you think they are expecting us? Tonight I have planned a special surprise in your husband's honor. I challenge King Arthur to battle. Oh my goodness, it is a surprise. Don't wait dinner, I might miss the soup. You can't win! I've got the magic sword! I switched the sword from the plane to the train! I had it switched from the train to the plane! I thought you'd think of that, so I took it back to the train! And I thought you'd both think of that, so I had the sword sent special delivery. Whose side are you on? Depends who signs for the sword first. A special delivery! Your one your magic sword! Here, boy! Here, boy! Oh, oh, I need a signature! Oh, uh, do you have a pen? Oh, I must have left it in my other armor. Arthur, dear. It really is so nice to get away from Camelot for a change. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Dale Robertson. Some of you may remember from the tales of Wells Fargo. Right now, I'd like to tell you a little about the picture you're going to see. Shortly after the Civil War, one of the major projects in this country was to join the east to the west with a great railroad, the greatest the world had ever known. But there were many problems. The weather, the terrain, the Indians. But one of the biggest problems was a group of men who were known as land grabbers. Men who would jump out ahead of the railroad and buy up all of the land and attempt to charge the government fantastic prices for it. Such a man was Montgomery Blaine. In an effort to put a stop to this, the government sent out Senate investigators. Such a man was Senator Freeman. And many times these Senate investigators didn't return. So in order to protect them, the government put together a special team of men whose job was so secretive that even their own families didn't know what they did. And such a man, was just an eagle, who was known as the man from Button Willow. And this is his story. I received your message, sir. It is good to see you again, Justin, and you, sir. Once more, I must warn you that the risk you take is entirely your own. We cannot acknowledge or help you in any way. I understand that. We have received word that a United States senator has been shanghaied and taken aboard one of those ships. Which one, we do not know. Once they are at sea, they plan to do away with him. It is imperative that he be rescued. Our best chance is to separate. You get the captain, I'll try to cover you. I'm ready. And so are they. I get going. Ah! He makes a stand. To protect this land, he's the man from Button Willow.
There are parts of the world where history is volcanic, where history keeps breaking through like fire. This is modern Bethlehem. The first Christmas happened here. The birth that changed the world happened here. In the dust and politics of the Middle East, God broke through into time, was born in human flesh, lived, taught, and about 33 years later and a few miles away, outside the walls of Jerusalem, was crucified, died, and rose from the dead. When those events happened, the Middle East was then what it is now, a crunch zone between two great powers. Back then, it was Rome and Parthia. Quirinius, in giving you the governorship of Syria, we are giving you a problem. You understand that? Yes, Augustus. We have problems on the German frontier. We have not yet civilized Dalmatia. We cannot afford trouble with the Parthian Empire. And between them and us are the Jews, so obsessed with their god that we can make neither soldiers nor Romans out of them. Your orders, Augustus? Keep them quiet. And my agents say they think they have a king coming to them, a messiah. Well, I've already given them King Herod, and that is good enough. Mariam, my dear wife, Mariam. I am Mariam. I'm your queen. I'm King Herod's wife. It's it's your husband's orders, ma'am. <laughs> Sir. Father, King Herod! Barabbas, my son, that is not a king, that is a Roman puppet, a mongrel out of Idumea. We have a king. Gentlemen, from the stage of the National Arts Center of Canada, an evening of magic and illusion starring Shari Lewis. Shari's guests this evening will be an international cast of the world's greatest magicians. Starring the master of grand illusion, Mark Wilson. Assisted by Nani Darnell in the beautiful and amazing Azra Levitation. The world's foremost escape artist, the amazing Randy, who will attempt the great Houdini's dangerous new fan escape. <laughs> I'll explain how that trick works to you later. <laughs> and then again, maybe I won't. The magical comedy of the great Tom Sawyer and Company. And from Holland, the celebrated magical mime artistry of Flip. Assisting Shari, the amazing Lamb Chop. Oh, of course. And my assistant, Hands. <laughs> and Shari's special guests, the stars of the National Ballet of Canada, Karen Kane. 
and Frank Augustine. In the premiere performance of a magical ballet, Beauty and the Beast. I tell you, I really fall for magic. Woo!